Now, if your testosterone happens to be low, then, and setting aside for a moment the prediabetes, we want to get the blockade out of the way of making testosterone. You're in your 40s, why should your testosterone be low? You're not prediabetic, you're not hyperrheumatizing. Well, it's called environmental pollution. We all know about this. Lead blocks testosterone, cadmium blocks testosterone, all the environmental estrogens block testosterone, herbicides, pesticides, and so forth. Now, if you haven't heard about the impotent infer infertile microphallic, yeah, microphallic alligators? Yes, in the Everglades. National Geographic actually did a, a little article on this. Actually, it was a medium-sized article. And what they found is that it was caused by an act of Congress. What? Yeah, government agencies do all kinds of interesting things with unintended con consequences. They passed the sugar tariff of 1970. And the sugar tariff raised the price of imported sugar so high that the producers near the, in Florida were favored. And so they spread their fields right up next to the Everglades and they started spraying all those sugarcane fields. And that would never have happened because sugar being imported was two cents per pound. And the Florida people could only do it for eight cents a pound. So as soon as they put the tariff in there, fine. Uh, guess who passed the tariff? The congressional people who were paid by the sugar producers. Have you ever heard of that sort of an arrangement? Yeah. So anyway, the al alligators couldn't have little baby alligators because of the sugar tariff. And what that illustrates is that environmental toxins can block one's testosterone. Getting back to that. Okay. Now, some more about this. A study on Danish organic farmers compared to Danish university students about the age of people going to UBC. And the Danish <laughs> organic farmers had almost double the serum testosterone of the UB, not UBC, but this was Danish university students. They'd been farming and eating organic for that much longer, and the students hadn't done it at all. So what do we do? Remember, trying to give, give somebody testosterone or have them make their own testosterone isn't going to work too darn good if they've got all these blockades in the way of their own testosterone. Somebody comes in in his 40s, he wants testosterone, I say, yeah, you want it from your own testicles. Wait till you get to be 76 before you get it from someplace else. So how do we get it out of there? It's not coming out. Well, one way of doing it, it actually happens to be heavy sweating. Um, someone in Southern California did some research in which they did fat biopsies and checked for basically environmental estrogens, toxic chemicals, and so forth. And then they had these people do 30 episodes of heavy sweating for 30 to 40 minutes. Now, the heavy sweating doesn't matter how you do it. You can get in a sauna and do it. You can run like heck and do it. You can do interval training and do it. You can go to Cancun and lie on the beach, whatever it takes to do heavy sweating. And then they biopsy it again. And what do you know? The amount of environmental toxins was down by two-thirds after 30 episodes of heavy sweating. So particularly now for the prediabetic guys, hey, interval training, as you know, is the way to go if you're a prediabetic. There's research on which kind of exercise is best, and interval training has it all over aerobic exercise, and the interval training is what makes you sweat. So you do the heavy sweating for 30 episodes, uh, but the one that's most popular with some of the guys I know is getting in an infrared sauna and sweating like crazy because infrared induces nitric oxide synthase. And all the guys say, what's that? And I say, you ever heard of Viagra? Oh, okay, that blocks nitric oxide. Do you mean I can make more nitric oxide in my own very own body? Uh-huh, people have been doing it for thousands of years. They just go out in the sunshine. There's infrared and sunshine too, isn't there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's another way of, again, getting the toxic chemicals out of the way. Okay. Now, lead and cadmium don't sweat out too well. Those have to be chelated out if you're going to get them out, or you can take a very, very long time uh, with using vitamin C, which does pull out lead, but it takes an awful long time. So we do a chelation trial and find out what the toxic metals are, and if there's lots of them, Chelation therapy intravenous, you're all familiar, is most effective. But there are other ways. Uh, well, I know a homeopath who helps people with homeopathic dilutions of whatever the toxic metal is and can find more in the urine. Not as much as with the chelation therapy with EDTA and DMPS. But use whatever means is appropriate. Just get those toxic metals out, there, out of there. Uh, get the environmental chemicals out of there, and the person will do better.
All right, now once we've gotten the barriers out of the way, the barriers to, to production of testosterone, the next thing then is to encourage its internal production. Again, here I'm mostly yammering on about people in their 40s and 50s. By the time we get older than that, okay, maybe just bringing in exogenous testosterone might be the thing to do. But that one can stimulate testosterone endogenously. And here is the list of things uh, that has research backing to show that it boosts up testosterone for guys. And we will be going through one at a time, so I skipped the list. Now, um, Ananda Prasad, who is now at Wayne State University at the time, he was a young professor in Iran, went out to investigate what were called Iranian dwarfs at the time. They were people living in rural Iran, and both men and women were, hmm, in their 20s, very little secondary sexual development, and shorter than the rest of the people there. And what he discovered, it was a fairly severe defi zinc deficiency. Zinc stimulates growth hormone, and funny thing, but zinc stimulates testosterone. Yes. So what Dr. Prasad did is had everybody take, oh, why were they so zinc deficient out there? A very high grain diet. And as you know, grains contain phytates, and phytates bind up zinc, and zinc doesn't get in the body. So that's what was going on. So anyway, he had them take zinc, and even though they were in their early 20s, usually between 20 and 25, they blossomed with sec secondary sexual characteristics, characteristics, if I can say that word, and grew an inch or two maybe three for some of them, just with the help of the additional zinc. All right. Now, gold standard for assessing zinc happens to be the white cell zinc, but I can't find a lab that does it anymore. According to Dr. Prasad, that's the best. All right, so it's not available, so what else can you do? Try a serum alkphos. Alkaline phosphatase is a zinc-dependent enzyme, and if the lower that is below median, the more you're going to find that if you have that person take extra zinc or you know, eat a lot of pumpkin seeds, sesame seeds, full of zinc, uh, the more you're going to find that that alkaline phosphatase is going to climb. So you can use it as an indirect indicator that the person doesn't have enough zinc. I'd rather have the white cell uh, thing, but uh, I can't get it. Okay. Oh, and we all know about zinc pushing out copper, and in some cases, molybdenum, so we have to be careful of that if we're having them take extra zinc. Okay, so we got vitamin A and testicles. Vitamin A is a direct stimulant, and I do mean vitamin A. Now, you probably have encountered the name Lara Pizzorno somewhere. Um, she's a PhD. She's also married to Joe Pizzorno, head of Bastyr University for a long time. She wrote us a wonderful article about vitamin A, and in it, she pointed out that up to 45% of the population can be found not very effective at taking beta carotene into vitamin A. And that's the point I'm trying to make. It has to be vitamin A itself to do the job. So there's your citation. And besides the citation, what does the citation have to say? Come on now. There we go. It tells us that retinoids are necessary for the things that are listed right there on the screen. And you can read them in front of them on your computer, basically, to make little sperms and to keep the, the um, organs from, what does it say up there? Atrophying. We got to have enough vitamin A. So. Definitely vitamin A, as vitamin A, please. And don't count on beta carotene and carotenoids and so forth to do the job. So we got zinc, we got vitamin A. Would it surprise you to hear that zinc and vitamin A also stimulate growth hormone together? Yes, just like they stimulate testicles together. 